she just has nothing to go on with, yet she's still got at least one pup inside her. Give me a push, girl. Come on, Mindy. If there's still a kitten in there 12 hours after the rest of the litter's been born, we're going to need to do something pretty quickly. All right, mate. From what women tell me, mastitis is one of those awful conditions that just feel terrible. A real throbbing, awful pain that just won't subside. Chris has been dragged out of bed. Hey, Jeanette, hey, how are hi. you? Where's our girl? Upstairs. OK. He doesn't know it yet, Thank you. but this emergency is going to be one of the longest, toughest tests he's ever faced. Come right. through, Chris. OK, thanks. Jeanette is worried about her Norwich Terrier, Bindi, who's having problems with her first litter of pups. Oh, here it comes. Even though she's five and a half and I guess uh, in the dog world a mature mother, it's to be expected that she's just not, not too sure about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Did you get a bite there? I did. You OK? Yeah, it's a nice bite. <laughs> this breed is notorious for difficult births because of their small pelvis. I do actually have a puppy coming through now. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Good girl. Good girl. Push. Heads through, but we've got to wait for that. Mm, big. The shoulders to come through, and this is where we're stuck at the moment. Come on, Bindi. Come on, good girl. Come on, girl. Good. Give me a push, girl. Come on, Bindi. Come on, Bindi. Give me one really good push. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Got her? Yeah. So we just have to get air into these lungs. The puppy's out, but he's not breathing. This is critical. Let me start sucking in air. Is he alright? I'm getting movement, but just not a lot of breathing. Hey, puppy. The physicality of the whole thing, how vigorous I'm being, is very deliberate. I'm trying to tell it that, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to get going, you've got to breathe. And I'll do that any way possible. Okay, we're getting a little bit more movement. Mum knows best and she'll stimulate a, a movement as well. Moving. At last, Bindi's first puppy is showing signs of life. God, he's real. <laughs> oh, you little squeaker. Look, Bindi. A little boy. Relieved, because I must say I didn't think that little pup was alive. Oh. And you got kissed by me, sucked oh. in. <laughs> Chris, well done. That's fantastic. Thank you. That was hard work. It was, wasn't that it? That was hard. No, admit it. Hey, <laughs> admit it? Yes. I admit it. Bindi's contractions have started again, and there are more complications. The second puppy is in a dangerous breech position. It's sort of the position that vets dread. It has horrible connotations, and when you've got a head coming through, you can grab the head and pull that with the shoulders, but with this, you're, you're grabbing hold of slippery toes, and that's it. It just makes a nightmare. I can feel the, the hips and, and the shoulders trying to force their way through that pelvis and they're just too big for it. It's just agony. It's awful, isn't it? Agony. One more. Baby, darling. It's OK. Got it? Yep. And when the puppy arrives, once again, there is no response. You can do it. I need to surprise all of us, huh? Any movement? No. No, it doesn't look good. No. 
Nope. Sorry, girl. Sorry about that. Oh, you certainly <laughs> tried. <laughs> My God, it's mm. been a hard, a hard night, mm. isn't it? It's not over. Oh my God, how can we do any more? Hmm. I don't know whether Bindi could take any more. She needs a rest, but I, I guess whether her body's going to let her have a rest is, is another thing. Chris faces a dilemma. There is at least one more puppy to come, and Bindi is now too exhausted to push. Didn't work out the way we wanted it to, did it? Next one will be okay, they won't. Yeah? No, it just hasn't moved. No, okay, let's go. No, okay. Good try. Let's do it. Yep. Bindi has been in labour for six hours, and Chris has decided her health is now at risk. She just has nothing to go on with, yet she's still got at least one pup inside her. Leave it any longer, we risk that pup. I just think it is worth now going to Caesarean. The emergency surgery will be performed back at the Bondi Clinic. I'm just through the back edge. I'm just getting a bit of a second wind now at 4 a.m. <laughs> is that what it is? 4 a.m. almost. The first puppy is stable and is being fed some much needed milk. After opening Bindi up, Chris discovers there is one puppy remaining. But the little girl is lifeless. Scream like you hate it. Oh. And finally, the sound Chris has been waiting for. Doing pretty well now, breathing on her own now. Great, great, all right. Fingers crossed those signs continue to improve. Now, we just need to sew her back up and um, wake her up. <sighs> Bindi's waking up from the anaesthetic and is recovering well from her marathon ordeal. That was hectic. <laughs> hey, Mum. You know this one? You know this one? Hmm? Sure. You know you actually can't get out of this one. We do have video footage to prove this is actually yours. Now, Jeanette. Yes? You've met your little boy before. Yes. But you haven't met your little girl before. Oh. That's good is news, huh? Is OK? Yeah. Yeah, she's fine. She's yeah. just coming out of her seat now. Oh, sweet. Mm, beautiful. Oh, sweet. Noisy and beautiful. She looks a bit bigger than him. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, oh my gosh, what a night. I what know. a night. Mm. Oh, was that hard, that yeah. last bit? Yeah, it was. Yeah. They are just so adorable, oh my mm. God. You clever people. When Jeanette checks on Bindi, Chris can finally raise a delicate subject. And Jeanette, this is a bit embarrassing. We've come all this way. Yet yeah, they don't look like purebred Norwich Terriers. What? Who's dad? <laughs> He's a Jack Russell. Jack Russell crosses, <laughs> eh? That explains a lot. The only name we had was for the boy, Little Bone or Boney. <laughs> Bindi's mother was called Juliet, and we thought we should name a girl after the mother, so she might be Juliet. If you've got. Bone and Juliet, it's not too much of a stretch to have Bonio and Juliet. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. It might be 6.30 oh, in the morning, but I'm still functioning. That's good. That's good. Yeah, see? Funny guy. Crazy times. Oh, yes. Bindi will stay at the clinic with her two puppies for overnight observation. That's one of the longest nights I've ever had. Highly stressful. We lost one. That's sad, but we got two living pups, which is great. A good result. What's this? Is that day? I'm going home. Bindi's puppies are now six weeks old, and Jeanette is besotted. Very, very cute. It's a hard one, but 
I think we're going to keep them. She's a bit thirsty. Yeah, she's a bit stressed, isn't she? Yeah, she's a bit stressed. Okay. At the Animal Emergency Service on the Gold Coast, brand new mum Princess has been brought in to see Dr Alex Hines by worried owners Kira, Fardine and their daughter Zainab. I think she's squashing on every hill. Oh, is she? Okay, I might just pop this little guy out. You're getting squashed back there, mister. Earlier today, a heavily pregnant Princess went missing. Usually, when I go to work every day, I come out and Princess come to me. And this morning, when I asked Carol, where does Princess, have you seen her? It was quite a few hours, actually, and then I got quite concerned because she was due to have the babies. Labor's hard, so I wanted to be there with her. So I was a bit stressed. Yeah, I found her in the backyard, and she had the baby. Princess is just eight months old, and the family was immediately worried the birth may not have been straightforward. My husband thought that her stomach felt quite hard um, and her, her belly was moving a lot. Let's get her through and have a look at her. <laughs> We're still worried that she has a baby inside or maybe the placenta, I'm not sure. It looks like she's like having contractions or something. Okay. She seems like distressed or I don't know if that's normal. This family have brought their little princess in. They're a little bit worried and to be honest, I'm a little bit concerned as well. Maybe she's still got another little kitten in there. For a young mum, she she's did done a good job. really yeah. great job, hasn't she? Look so at them all. So proud of her. Excuse me, little guys. I need to just have a feel of her tummy, so I'm just going <laughs> to... They're attached tightly. They're yeah. having a great feed. <laughs> They're strong. Whoa! Sorry, kids. <laughs> Sorry. Took away the milk bar. Looking at Princess, she is quite young to be having kittens, and she does seem to be a little bit distressed. And certainly it's quite firm in her belly. And it can be difficult to work out sometimes, is it just yeah. her uterus that mm -hmm. still feels quite firm because that's going to be larger than normal. There is something very firm in there. Is it a kitten? I don't know. I'm going to pop you back in with your babies for a minute. But if there still is a kitten in there, it's been almost 12 hours since the rest of the litter were born. We're going to need to do something pretty quickly. Don't you jump out, little miss. You stay in there with your family. If there's still a kitten in there 12 hours after the rest of the litter's been born, then that kitten will be losing its oxygen supply. So time is ticking. There we go. Alex Good is being girl. assisted by vet nurse Tiffany. There we go. This is Princess. She has had five little babies and her family are really worried that she might have more kittens in there because they've seen her belly contract. Okay. And I can feel something in there. We're going to take an X-ray and that'll tell us for sure if there's any babies left in there really hope there's not a kitten stuck in there because I don't want to have to perform an emergency caesarean on Princess. She's still so young and that's not a road we want to go down. Alex is reluctant to keep Princess separated from her precious babies for too long. I think having the babies out of sight is actually better for her. Yeah. When she can see them, she's worrying about them. Good girl, sweetheart. Good girl. Okay, I'm taking an x-ray. One, two, three. So the x-ray goes up and Tiffany and I just look at each other. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It just wasn't on our radar. It's good. There's no babies in there. That's great. No skeletons. I can see that she's got... Look at that. The results are not what they were expecting. I think what I was actually feeling... is food. It's food. This is all food there. There's no kitten in there but there is just a lot of food that she must have woofed down straight after she had those kittens. That's really good news for Princess, because it means that we don't need to worry about getting more babies out of there. She's just got to deal with the five that she's got. And um, maybe, maybe no dinner tonight. On a full stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we've given Princess a clean bill of health, I'm going to look at these five little kittens, because we need to make sure that they're OK. She like super healthy. I know. What are you? You're like a little tiger. Oh, we're going to escapee. We have an escapee. Oh, where are you going? A runaway already. 
We're going to look at their hearts. I'm going to make sure that they don't have any congenital deformities. Listen to your chest. OK. OK. You don't know what you're complaining about. I saw you had a big feed. I love this part of the job. They are so cute. Their little faces, their little squeaking noises they make. How adorable. How adorable are you? We'll call hey. that one Alex. <laughs> yeah. They're just sleeping, darling. They're OK. You know, you can go in in a second. Mum's getting a bit worried there, isn't she? Four of them look fantastic. They're a healthy weight, about 100 grams or so. They're really strong and vigorous. You're a really good girl. You're a clever mum. But the last kitten has Alex concerned. This one's actually a lot smaller than the others. You're what we would call the little runt. But you've got big lungs. This is the one they'll need to keep an eye on because those other ones are so strong. And in that situation, this little guy could end up missing out. He's going to be pushed out of the milk bar by his much stronger siblings. And so the family are going to need to keep a close eye on him and he might need some extra help. So we've got five healthy babies, one healthy mum, no hidden surprises in there. Great. I think we get back to them and let them know the good news. Yeah, great. Oh, you're like a little tiger. Hello. Hi. Put your the little family back. Hello. Family back. There we hey, go. Sweetie. Now, I've got some news. OK. And it's good news. There's no more babies in there. OK. OK. <laughs> but what I can feel in there, what you could feel, yeah. is actually her stomach full of food. <laughs> so she has an enormous stomach. And that's all that is. Yes. So if, if something is in the belly and it's taking up a lot of space or in the abdomen, mm -hmm. it can actually restrict their breathing. And I think that's what's happened with her. OK. <laughs> feel a bit silly. <laughs> oh. Not, look, you did the right thing to bring her down. I wouldn't have been able to sleep if I didn't bring her in. I would have been worried all night, so. I did give them all a really mm -hmm. good check over okay. and they're all in great health. Awesome. There is one little chap that's smaller than the others, okay. you might have noticed. So this little guy, he's, he's quite a lot smaller. So when they've all had a feed, it might be worth just making sure that this guy gets time at the milk bar yep. by yep. himself. OK. OK, yep. I love her. She's a really good cat, really friendly. She's my princess. <laughs> the kittens will stay with Kira and her family until they're old enough to go to new homes. But Kira has already decided the tiny boy will stay with his mum. It's like hard not to keep all of them, but we can't. Right, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Nice to meet you. Really appreciate nice to meet you. it. Thank Take you care. so much. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Scott's now heading off to Berkshire to visit another one of his favourite women at her rescue sanctuary. Jill's incredible. I mean, she dedicates her entire life to looking after border collies, animals that have come from desperate situations and they come to her house and the heaven that she offers. She fixes them up, she feeds them, she loves them and then she sends them on to new homes. She's an absolute saint as far as border collies are concerned. Hey Jill, how are you? Oh, hello Scott. Today, to Jill's you. asking hello, Scott for help with a new patient. So, I was coming to see Kizzy, your three and a half legged dog. Yes. And cute little yeah. Snowy. So, should yeah. we have a look at her? Yes. Kizzy's story is quite a sad one. She was rescued from a lady who was hoarding dogs, and then when she went into hospital, the dogs were then left to starve. There were probably about 30 dogs. They were all in filthy, appalling conditions. Kizzy was found cowering in the corner. She had three and a half legs, and she was absolutely petrified of everybody. And at that point, we didn't know that Kizzy was actually having a baby as well. Little Snowy would be Kizzy's only puppy. Hello, ladies. Hello, how are you? Hello, you. Hello, you. Hello, you. Come in here. Oh, look how cute you are. Hello. Hi, Kizzy. Hi, sweetheart. OK. Kizzy's situation is impossible to comprehend, frightening to do so, in fact. 
It's a bit of a mystery as to how Kizzy has lost this leg. There's really only two options. One of them is that maybe she had the foot bitten and it's fallen off or that she's had got a leg caught and then it's actually been broken and then snapped off. So the mind absolutely boggles to think what she's been through. While 12-week-old Snowy hasn't a care in the world, Jill is worried that Kizzy is still feeling pain in her mutilated no, leg. Not used to a lead in her former life, no, eh? No, no. Come on, sweetheart, you're gonna be on a walk on this? Come on, you're gonna follow you know your what puppy. A lead does? Oh, good, good girl. girl. Oh, She's a dog that's been physically damaged, is emotionally hammered, and she just seems like a lost soul. Hello, beautiful. So let's have a little look, shall we? Hey? I'm gonna do my absolute best to do anything I can to get her back on track. One of the things is I don't think that she's quite balanced with it. And the other is it appears to throb a lot. Really? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I can see that the loss of the foot is actually just above the ankle, yeah. fractured straight through there and left her with a very strange uh, amputation. I had a good feel of the leg and the knee, but what was most telling was how she was throwing her leg forward. She was doing that because she still had a knee, but the knee joint is only of use if you've got a foot to place on the ground. She doesn't. The knee is actually throwing her off balance and it's a pointless yeah. joint. Yeah. And if you have any concern that there's any discomfort from the end here, I do think that amputation is the way to go. And that okay. would just mean that she's a bit more comfortable and also yeah. that we're getting rid of some of the weight in yeah. that leg and hopefully the throbbing as well. Yeah. Scott will now take Kizzy back to his Richmond practice for surgery. But there's another passenger coming along for the ride. Kizzy had never been allowed to keep a puppy. The local farmer used to just come in and drown them. Good girl. That's one. So this little puppy is very special to her. Stay no, in there. No, no. Stay in there. Good girls. <laughs> oh, good girls. Hey, not so keen on the practice, are you? Hey, good girls. Whoa. Oh, goodness me. Snowy doesn't know of all the traumas that Kizzy's been through and is a happy, healthy, boisterous pup. Oh, no, dear. <laughs> Kizzy, on the other hand, is quite nervous and quite shy. And I think, actually, the daughter is bringing the mother out. And I think that's a beautiful thing to see. You get in in the warm. I will look uh, after your babies fine. and I'll give you a call as soon as they're done. Thank you Alrighty. very much. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Snowy will have to go with Kizzy. Lovely. They've never been parted. Hopefully, Scott will be able to <laughs> cope with both of them. <laughs> hey, Nate. I've got oh. double trouble today. Back at Richmond, oh. Scott has oh. also got his That's hands snowy. full. And this is Mum Kizzy. I'll try and see if she'll walk for me. She's pretty nervous. She's very shy and understandably so, uh, considering everything she's been through. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl. Wow, there must be so much more extra effort on that. Yeah, yeah, and it's basically just throwing her completely off balance. She's throwing that knee forward, but she hasn't got a foot to place on the ground. What her treatment needs to rely on, of course, is fixing what we can physically, and then hoping that with time and the right new owner, that she will emotionally and mentally come good. Syringe. Good girl. Let's Kizzy is booked in for surgery tomorrow, so Scott has relaxed the rules to allow Snowy to stay overnight as well. The 12-week-old puppy has never been separated from her mum. There's a puppy. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Snowy being around reduces Kizzy's stress levels, and of course, going into a clinical environment, that's all important. Good girls. Good girls. Well done. One of the reasons why I love doing work with rescue animals is just to remind yourself that there are animals out there that desperately need your help and attention. I think it reignites your passion and why you'll continue to do the best job that you can to protect animals. What's he doing? What's he doing? Back at the Richmond practice, student vet nurse Jess is keeping 12-week-old Snowy occupied, while mum Kizzy is prepped for her big operation. Thank you very much. Oh, good girl. Yes, you're a good girl. Come on, Kizzy. Hey, Kizzy. 
Good girl, let's pop her down. Lovely. There you go. Kizzy was found Good on a property girl. in Ireland with 30 other starving dogs. She was baby. pregnant and part of her left hind leg was missing. All right, Kizzy. Whoa, what do you think, Jim? She's gorgeous, she, isn't she? She's so gorgeous. And her puppy. Oh, those eyes. I know. And how much they love each other, I think, is just so sweet. I know, yeah. I know. Puppy's being babysat upstairs. Hi, hey, Kizzy. Kizzy is having an amputation today. At the moment, she's got a leg which is about sort of three quarters. She has a knee joint, which is completely non-usable, and it's throwing her off balance. And also, there's the possibility of some throbbing pain at the end. So what we're gonna be doing is just shorting it up, making it a lot neater, and hopefully giving her a good future. Yeah. Avneen, do you wanna just hold up the vein yeah. for me, please? Today, Scott will be assisted by vet nurse Gemma and third year vet student Avneen. So we're going to do an amputation today. Okay. Have you ever seen one of them? No, I haven't, so it'll be good for me to yeah. see. Good girl, good girl Kizzy, good girl, brave girl. girl. Avneen's studying at Liverpool University and is doing a work experience placement with Scott. It's a good girl. So brave. So brave. It can be really heartbreaking treating a dog like Kizzy, who's had such a traumatic background. Um, she's just so terrified, and knowing what she's been through, um, we don't want to hurt her or scare her anymore, um, but we do have to do it, and it's going to be better in the long run for her. I can't imagine the life she must have had. I know. Pretty horrific. Yeah, I think it's probably worse than you could even imagine. Time to sleep, honey. Go to sleep for a little bit. But as soon as Kizzy is put under anaesthetic, there are immediate problems. Hey, Gemma, if you can just hold the dog for a second. She's just a little white. Breathe. Basically, Kizzy uh, is uh, having a few problems breathing. So, uh, yeah, it's a little worrying. Breathe. Kizzy is struggling to breathe after being anaesthetised. I'm pulling the legs out and in to try and encourage Kizzy to breathe. I'm also giving her a bit of a rub and pressing on her chest, just trying to stimulate that breathing reflex. Oh there we go, that's better. Thankfully, she's starting to breathe. A little bit of a scare there for Kizzy. Okay, not a good start. Now that Kizzy's breathing is stable, the amputation can begin. The rescue dog was found with part of her left hind leg torn off. It's a big operation for Kizzy and it comes with its own set of risks. Of course, she could have major bleeding uh, and she might even have sort of phantom pain as a result of losing the leg. But fingers crossed it should go very well. Certainly not the most elegant of procedures. It's not something that you want to do as a vet, but uh, in this case, it's, it's absolutely going to make her life better. For third year vet student Avneen, this will be some initiation. Expect to see a lot of blood, <laughs> quite a bit, um, and hopefully just a smooth operation. Hopefully things go well. How's everyone feeling? Everyone okay? Yeah. All good? Yeah. Job good? Yeah. good? I've had vet students faint in surgeries before. Okay. <laughs> so if you're feeling at all nauseated, then do uh, tell me and just sit down. Don't try and run away, just sit down. Okay. You're gonna find all the large vessels are just basically running along the, the inside of the femur there. Okay. As Scott continues to carefully navigate around Kizzy's blood vessels, upstairs her 12-week-old puppy Snowy is being babysat by Jess. She's quite attached to her mum, which is really sweet. Yeah. Mummy's gonna be here soon. She's gonna come round, yeah? We're actually quite close now to the point where we're exposing the bone, which means that we have to get out some fairly heavy duty equipment. We are now just about to saw through the bone. Uh, so if you are delicate of stomach, look away now. <laughs> So now the leg's off, it's all about closing the wound. So we're bringing back together all the muscles that we've cut through and try and get a result, which means that it's nice and neat. Let's get this little lady working up now, shall we? So Avenine, you're welcome to de-glove and de-gown. Thanks very much. Thank you. Kizzy's operation has gone really well. The vet student didn't fall over and faint and all the nurses did a great job. So yeah, really, really happy. Kizzy's woken up beautifully and she seems comfortable. So yeah, it's great. It's time to see mummy again, it'll be nice and gentle. Okay, she's had a big operation today, hasn't she? Here we go. 
Whenever I see cases of animal cruelty, obviously you feel a bit sad, but more than anything, I feel overwhelming anger. These are defenseless, innocent animals that just don't deserve the fate that they are suffering. And so when I see cruelty like that, it just plain angers me. Oh, no way. That's all a bit much, eh? <laughs> Hi, Jill. Hi, Scott. Look who I've got. Aww. Let oh, me give you it. Snowy. Oh, snowy. <laughs> oh, oh, did you miss her? Oh. Hey, did you miss <laughs> Mummy? Next day, Kizzy's recovered well enough for Scott to take her and Snowy home to Jill's rescue sanctuary. Kizzy, Kizzy. Oh, sweetie. Hello. Are you OK? When Scott came through, I felt very relieved to see Kizzy looking really quite bright after such a massive operation. All right, Joe, well, I'll let you see it in all its glory, and you better see just how well she's managing oh, on wow. those three legs. Yeah. It's not like she's uh, not used to walking no, on three legs. No. It's just a little bit neater now. Yeah, yeah. She's off. That's yeah, it. she's off. <laughs> I think having that flapping leg removed is going to be so much easier for Kizzy. I think she's going to be a lot more comfortable. It's amazing that she behaves as she does, considering where she's come from, because all this must be quite traumatic for her because she's never been out of that awful home. Terrible. Kizzy has amazed me the way that she's dealt with the procedure. She is such a brave dog, but it's because of her history. She's had such a dreadful past that what we've done is just a drop in the ocean. Is that your mummy there? Hopefully okay. now it's a case of she's perfect. Yeah. Uh, she's just got a little bit of healing to do and then it's off to find oh. a new home. Yeah, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, you know yeah. what? It's, it's just such a small thing yeah. compared to what you do every well, day. No, it isn't. It's a big thing, <laughs> a very big thing. Well, I'm just happy and, to be a part uh, yeah. of it. It's been a wonderful result and we're so grateful to Scott for what he's done. Very grateful. Good luck, girls, in finding a new home. It sounds like this cow has milk fever. Now, this is a condition I've heard about but never, ever seen in real life. What I do know about it, though, is it makes the cows incredibly unpredictable, so this could be a real challenge. How are you? I'm Chris. Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Nice to meet you. You too. Uh, this is it's Penny, is it? Yes, Penny. You relax, it's OK. Penny has just given birth to a bull calf, and the new mother can't get up. Is she a little bit temperamental at the moment? Ah, uh, she is, actually, yes. Yeah. It's a bit of a hard calving. Owner Jenny is extremely worried. Milk fever is a life-threatening condition that affects new mums. These cows produce a lot of milk all of a sudden just when they're coming into delivering their calf. All that calcium going straight into their udder means they become quite deficient themselves. A lack of calcium in their body means their muscles can't contract. They don't have any strength to get themselves up. So the point of putting this rope around like this is really just to try to keep her still. Because with this condition, the problem is she becomes quite erratic in her behaviour. And for her to have the best chance of standing up right now, she needs to keep still. Try telling that to a 600 kilo cow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I do have her restrained, it's important really that we assess where she's at, make sure she does have milk fever, and then straight away get into fixing it. One of the big telltale signs of milk fever is that there's just absolute silence inside them when there should be constant gurgling at least every few seconds. Yeah, absolute silence, Danny. All right, so her temperature is barely 37 there. So that low body temperature and the fact that her rumen, her stomach isn't contracting there, yep. it really does look like milk fever. Yep. So what I'd like to do is, is get a, a bag of the calcium and actually run that into a vein. Yep. This is going to be a challenge. Yeah, she's not too happy. So. No, so we'll just see how we go there. I might need a hand. This is the critical moment. If I put the calcium in too quickly, she'll have a heart attack and she'll die. Then 
going to try to push her head back here and I'll actually sit on her neck there. Yep. And that should give me a good exposure to a, to a vein. Hey, 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 it's all right, it's all right. No, 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 no. The plan is to get the bag of calcium, put it straight into a vein. From there, it goes into a circulation, into the muscles where she needs it, and hopefully that's enough to help her stand up. So, Jenny, I'm just going to whack this needle in the vein right here. Hope yeah. you get the vein. <laughs> you don't look like you've got a lot of faith in me. As long as you get it in the vein, I'll be happy. You know I am actually a real vet. <laughs> Jeez. It's nice to know someone's got confidence in here. Isn't it? The Frisian isn't the only concern for her owner. Just give me that there. Jenny is also worried about the city vet. I didn't realise he was an actual vet. I thought Bondi vet was um, just a drama, yeah. I spent five years at uni getting this degree. I didn't spend a couple of weeks at a weekend drama school. Jeez, tough crowd. I'm going to keep the pressure on, on her neck, but just make sure that doesn't pop out. I just want to listen to her heart from here. Calcium can have a really toxic effect on the heart if it goes in too quickly. It's nice and steady. If that heart slows down, starts missing beats, or worse still, stops, the calcium has to stop as well. Chris said if the heart rate drops, it could drop that low, she could might die. So yeah, it is a bit dangerous. Are we halfway through that bag yet? No, it's running a bit slow. Yeah, okay, that's right. Slow's good. Just ease off a bit there, Jenny. It's just starting to get a little bit faint, a little bit slow there. All of a sudden, I listen to Penny's heart. It's slowed right down and there's an irregular beat. It's time to stop or she'll die. So, gonna pull that. She's just reached a limit, giving that calcium intravenously. So anytime you hear those beats starting to, to change, to go a bit quiet, to slow down, or to become irregular, you know it's time to stop. Penny's treatment isn't finished because the rest of that bag now goes underneath the skin. That way she'll slowly absorb it, and there's no risk of her heart having any sort of problems. All right, so that's emptied out that bag there. If the calcium treatment has worked, it should take effect immediately. This is where it's going to get really interesting. You ready to jump? Yeah. So I want to get the halter off. I'm going to do the leg first, then the head. Yep. Then we're both going to run, hold each other <laughs> and hope. All right. Yep. I know you've been through a lot. Some people here think I'm an actor. So. Let's understand we've both been through a little bit. All right. So let's get this rope off. I couldn't agree more. OK. Hey, 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 hey. Settle down, settle down, settle down, settle down. Here we go. You can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's up, she's up, she's up. Yes. Tail, tail, tail. Got it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Amazing. You wouldn't think that a little clear bag of liquid would be enough to get a 600 kilo cow to a feet, but it's worked its magic. Bob's going to take after mum here. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, little buddy, come on. <laughs> nice work. First steps. Amazing. So, mum's got up. And now our son has as well. Had your doubts, but look. Yep, good job. Are you happy with that? Yep, very happy. Not a bad job for an actor. <laughs> Logie award winning? Yeah, Logie. Or Academy award winning? Logie. Just a Logie? Just a Logie. I'll still take it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it hasn't been a bad day to see a big cow in trouble actually stand up with the help of the calcium and then see a calf take its first steps. It's pretty special. Hopefully now Jenny realises that I'm a vet. In Kyabram, the mum that Chris saved from milk fever is back at work. Penny's up, she's um, milking and down with the herd and doing really well. Come on, fella. Come on. <laughs> and her little calf is happy in the nursery. He's recovered real well too and he's playing and jumping around happy as Larry. 
After her initial reservations, owner Jenny is finally convinced about the boy from Bondi. I think he might be a vet now. <laughs> Hey Tim, how you going? Yeah, I'm good, thanks mate. Look, I was just wondering if you'd be able to get up and check out one of our koalas and look, I'm going to have some shot at but Meg, she's a bit off mate, but I think she's in a bit of pain. Perfect day. Here's Meg. Tim. Got Meg? Jeez, yeah. wet little darling. <laughs> Meg is a very sick, depressed koala. Her joey died just a week ago. Meg's four years old now. Um, last year she lost a joey. And this year, the same thing's happened. Sometime through the night, it gets out of the pouch, whether she throws it out of the pouch or it's exploring or something. But for some reason, by morning, it's so cold, we find the joey and, and it, they're already deceased. I'm gonna grab arms and hind legs. Yep. So all we need you to do is just keep her head up and Chris is gonna have a dig around in the pouch there. The cause of Meg's pain is quickly discovered. There it is. Yeah. So if you can see, I've got my finger underneath the, the lump there. It's, 50 cent piece sized. Yep. You're all right, mate. Meg's got a dramatically enlarged mammary gland. So one of her little teats and the gland associated with it is a huge size. It's sore, it's hot, and it's a big concern because if that gland isn't functioning, she just can't support a young. It's also the most likely reason why her last two joeys did not survive. You're right, Meg. I'd be thinking either a pressure build up yep. or a mastitis. Meg is in pain, you can see it right across her face, and from what women tell me, mastitis is one of those awful conditions that just feel terrible. A real throbbing, awful pain that just won't subside. So we're trying to help her through that whatever way we can. It's usually a streptococcus. Yep. Gets into the, into the jelly, causes infections in them. They yep. don't thrive because their whole system's focused okay. on trying to get rid of the infection. Yep. And, I mean, sadly, they, in the end, they, they die. All right, mate. The treatment for this, is gonna revolve around some nice warm compresses. Yep. So essentially some, some swabs, warm water, and just massaging that gland. Okay. In, in behind the teeth there? Yeah, getting right in there. If we can break up that clot and just make it into liquid milk instead of the, the solid milk that it is, then we can get it flushy okay. out and, and right out the end of the teeth. The antibiotics should kick in soon to relieve Meg's pain. Once the mastitis is cured, Chris is hoping Meg will finally become a successful mum. Where she's comfy. She likes you. I don't think it's me, I think I'm all skinny and I'm like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, got the, you got the touch. She's four, so let's hope that she's just young and she's not sure what she's doing and maybe next year with a little bit more maturity and you know that she can keep a hold of one and you know, get one full term. Two months on and there's good news for Meg. After treatment, her mastitis has cleared up and she's about to add to the park's koala population. We kept up the treatment just for a short while and the lump disappeared really quickly. So after that, we've had a really good mating with Herman. Um, so we believe it to be pregnant and it's ended up all good. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go and subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to watch more great content. Or for new, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, all you have to do is sign up at bondipet.com and we'll send you a link. We can't wait to see you there.